Here's a tutorial on how to do in carbs roof vignettes. Okay, let's just quickly go over what everything is. This is uh, a little indicator determining what the slope of the plane is. You see it here too, here too, and here too. These are our elevational datums or uh, points on the roof indicating at this point what the height of the roof is. Uh, this is a cricket. The red marks here indicate flashing. There's more flashing and flashing. This yellow mark indicates a clear story window. Here's a skylight, skylight, exhaust fan, exhaust fan, and a uh, plumbing stack, and plumbing stack. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you how this all uh, goes together. I'll hit the restart, start over. Okay, first thing I typically do is I uh, won't go over the program, but if you haven't looked at it, take a, look, take a chance to review the program. The uh, program wants you to basically have a high roof in the exhibition room and a low roof everywhere else. And it wants you to be economical with your use of materials. And the high roof needs to be between, um, what is it, 5 and, tw uh, excuse me, 6 and 12 and 12 to 12 uh, slope. So let's see, the most economical way of doing that is typically a gabled roof. And so let's just go ahead and break it as a gable down the center. Another nice thing about doing the gable with a break in the center is it gives you a nice even uh, line at the at the uh, gutter here so that it doesn't slope where the clear story is because there's supposed to be a clear story window at the exhibition room. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Roof plane and I typically put on ortho and I put on cursor most of the time when I'm doing this. And I just choose the four corners and then I go over 22 feet which is half of 44 if you look at the dimension string at the top here right here. So we will break it in half so do 22. Okay. Do the same thing over here. Roof plane. Make sure 33 is right. Yep. So we're over 22. That's right. Okay. Now I typically hit the set roof tool and I rotate this tool so it slopes in the direction I want water to flow. Okay. Now I move on to the next thing. Okay, let's draw the lower roof now. Hit roof plane. I'm going to break this with a uh, with a hip in the corner. You got to turn the um, ortho off to do diagonals. And I'll just do that. Turn back on. Okay. There it is. It looks like I'm just a little bit off of there in the corner, so I'm using the move adjust tool to snap to the corner of the of the wall. You never want overhangs on these roofs. So you, you want it to snap to the edge of the wall always. Draw another roof plane and we'll draw that one right here. You know a technique I use sometimes, and I'll go ahead and show you what I do, is I draw it on the inside. I'll turn that ortho off. So that oops hit undo. Oops, we'll have to redo that I guess. Okay, so what I typically do is I hit this uh, roof plane and I'll draw on the inside. If, if you're having problems sometimes snapping perfectly with the other roof planes, you can do this and just use this move adjust tool and then you can zoom in and then adjust it exactly how you want. And then you don't get over, over uh, laps of the planes Sometimes you can't tell what you're adjusting. If things get out of sorts, I recommend you do this. Okay, so it just takes a little bit longer to do, but you know that you've you've snapped exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so let's use the set roof tool to rotate the arrow in the direction that you want water to slope. There we are. And you'll notice if, if you click on the plane that, that that datum marker jumps around. So you can use that to your advantage as you do the design. Okay, next we need to set some heights for these roof planes. Okay, well the program tells us that these low areas have eight foot ceiling height and then one foot six of structure. So that means that the that the roof height roof height right here would be nine foot six. So you set roof tool and then click on that question mark and then just click on these until you get to nine foot six. Okay, next we need, well you could do the same thing over here. Let's just go ahead and do that. 
here. This is going to be 9 foot 6 as well. Okay, next we need to set the height of this. Program tells us it should be between 2 and 12 and 5 and 12. So let's do the most efficient 2 and 12. Because it makes pretty easy math also. For every 1 foot of length, it's 2 inches of vertical climb. So let's do that. Let's hit the set roof tool and hit the question mark and just hit 1, 2, and 12. Okay. Now if we hit the set roof tool and click here, it tells us what that, you don't even have to do the math, which makes it easy. So we know that's 12 foot 6. Okay. The program tells us that the clear story window, let's just go ahead and draw it in, needs to be on the west wall of the exhibition room. Okay, so clear story. Just drop it in right there. Okay, so it's on the west wall. It also tells us the clear story, including the sill, needs to be 24 inches in total height. So we can add 24 inches to that 12 foot 6 to get us to 14 foot 6. Then we also know from the program that the upper level structure is 1 foot 6. So that gives us a total height of 16 feet. So use a set roof tool and go to 16 feet at these and we use a set roof tool to rotate this question mark around to this point. This is at 16 feet as well. So at 16. Okay. And then also we know from uh, the program that the upper level uh, pitch needs to, be, needs to be between 6 and 12 and 12 to 12. So let's go ahead and do the most efficient, the lowest slope. Use, uh, it's the most efficient as far as its use of material. So change it to 6 to 12. Also makes the math pretty easy for double checking some things if you want to. Okay, so it tells us 6 and 12. Let's do the same thing here. Okay, 6 and 12, 6 and 12. Okay, now again, if we hit this roof slope thing, it jumps that over and it gives us 27 feet. So we can double check that. We know for every um, one inch or one foot of horizontal distance, it's going to climb six inches. So it's a, so basically, we take 22 feet, which is half of that 44, and cut it in half will give us 11. So we could add 16 plus 11 is 27. The check works. Okay, so the only roof we haven't set yet is this one here, and we wanted to set that at 2 to 12 actually match the other roof. Okay, there we are. Next we just need to draw some uh, some flashing. We need to draw flashing everywhere that there's a, uh, uh, a like a vertical element abutting a, a, uh, a roof. A roof plane that is. So that occurs at these locations I'm drawing right now and at the chimney. So there's a vertical element intersecting a roof plane. Now obviously you don't have to do it at exterior. Oops. That wasn't the nicest looking little. Wow, I really really messed that up, didn't I? Move that right there. Move that like that. Use the move adjust tool to make these nice and clean if you want. Just like that. Now it looks good. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on these others. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, so our flashing is in. Now, we don't have to put flashing, obviously, at the edge of the building, just where there's a vertical element abutting the roof, so the top side of a roof element. Okay, next, let's draw in our cricket. The crickets have to occur at the... Um, I'm going to put the ortho on to make my lines straighter. Uh, crickets have to occur at, at the at the uh, fireplaces. So if you have a fireplace where water is shedding directly towards the fireplace, like in this condition, you need to have a cricket. And you basically just make kind of an equilateral triangle like I sh I've shown here. Okay, next thing, let's just go through our list of elements we have to drop in. This is a good check to make sure you have everything in there. Okay, program tells us that the sk a skylight needs to be placed in every room except for a closet or a mechanical room that does not have a window. Well, all the win rooms have windows, the exhibition, classroom, offices, reception, lounge, except for the restroom. So let's go ahead and drop skylights in the restrooms. You can just put it anywhere in there. Also tells us we have to put exhaust fans in each of the, each of the restrooms. So drop one of those in there in the toilet stall. 
and you need to have a plumbing vent stack everywhere that would be required. So you need one between the two restrooms and we need one right next to the sink here in the lounge. Code also or a program also tells us we need an HVAC condenser and it needs to be placed uh, further than three foot away from the edge of a roof and needs to be placed in a, one of the roofs that is um, 5 to 12 slope or less. So that would be one of the, some of these low areas here. Uh, it also says you can't put it in front of the clear story window. So it tells me it needs to be over here somewhere. So let's put it um, and let's just put it oh let's put it right here. That would be a good place for it. Okay. So we've got everything in there except for our gutters and downspouts. So let's go ahead and put in our gutters first. Gutters, you start by drawing on the edge of the wall, corner to corner, just like that, and then pulling out, and it creates your gutter. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to just get, scroll down a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing um, here. So if I'm actually going to start on the edge of the gutter like that, all the way to this edge, and pull out. There we are. So now it turns the corner, which is what I want it to do. And then we also need to draw a gutter from, we, we can't let water pour directly from the high roof to the low roof. It programmatically tells you you have to have a, a gutter and downspout in these locations. So we're going to do one there. We're going to do one here as well, which makes sense. And then each one of these gutters, oh, and you know it always makes sense to zoom in and make sure you've placed it properly. Each one of these gutters needs to have downspout on each side and the downspouts cannot intersect a window or door. So let's go ahead and place those. And typically, you know, it makes sense to place those oh towards towards the ends of each each gutter. Make sure you got them in there right. So on this one I have one here on the corner and one here. Um, you know what actually makes probably a little bit more sense than that though? Just if you think about it, because we're gonna we're gonna have uh water from the upper roof coming down on this this plane. So we might actually wanna have a, a gutter here and then we'll move this other gutter here on the corner. Or I'm sorry, downspout here. And we're gonna wanna move this downspout here. Oops. Yeah, that's a something you want to be careful of. If you grab a roof plane, it creates a new point in it. So always be careful of it. Just hit the undo if you need to. Okay, so here we are. Grab that, and I'm going to put that one on the corner rather than the other one. So we've got one on one end, one on the other, and then one here, and one here, and then one here, because it's going to be collecting the water coming from this high roof. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can get a little bit more accuracy here, and I'm going to put in a a downspout, one there, and one there, being sure I'm clear of that, or away from that clear story. And then we're going to do the same on the opposite side. Draw a downspout on each end. Okay. Now let's do a check, make sure we don't have any overlapping planes, and we don't. And then let's do another quick check and make sure we haven't forgotten any elements. We put the roof planes in, the flashing, the gutters, the crickets, the downspouts, the skylights, the exhaust fans, and the plumbing vent stacks, and the HVAC uh, condenser and the clear store. So it looks like we put everything in. Everything looks like it makes sense. I think we've met the slope and uh, the requirements, and we've got all the requirements of the program. So it looks like we're done. See you on the next video.